how do you leverage a planetarium to teach students chemistry? Hi, my name is Ariel. I am a educator, astrophysicist, and I work deeply in the planetarium field, currently working to reopen the planetarium in Lakewood, Colorado. And for this video, I'm going to be answering that question as best as I can. So unlike biology, which can take anywhere from days, weeks, months, or even years to see any progress with, depending on the experiment that you do, most of chemistry is highly interactive, very quick, can be done in a single lecture period most times, and often is a lot more interactive in regard to needing to put gear on, uh, gloves, uh, coats, eye protection, all that sort of thing, because a lot of the substances are a lot more volatile in a classroom setting than you might see in your typical biology or even physics class. And while I was thinking about ideas for this video, I actually found it a little bit challenging, despite having actually taken three whole years of chemistry in high school and also having many of my students be chemistry uh, related as well. It's challenging mostly just because a lot of what you do in chemistry is either heavily focus on mathematics, do a lot more calculations than in, say, a biology class, and a lot of the experiments would require specialized equipment to conduct. However, I did come up with a couple of creative ideas that could potentially make uh, the learning experience for a chemistry student uh, either in high school, middle school, or even elementary, more exciting and more fun for students. First off, keep in mind that a planetarium is essentially just a large screen that you can project whatever you want to uh, onto the sky for. Many of uh, the things that you might think about for a chemistry reaction you can see in the macro scale, say like the candle right above my head, that's an example of combustion. You can see that with your eyes. But what's happening on the microscopic scale? How are, say, in the case of the candle, the wax molecules interacting with oxygen in the air, binding with them, producing light, heat, and then producing carbon dioxide and water? Well, that's something that you can visualize pretty well by actually projecting those molecules, uh, creating uh, videos where you can orbit around them and see how they would break apart, the bonds would break apart, and reform to create new molecules. And just on that note of being able to see atoms close up, uh, it would be really helpful. I know I would have appreciated this when I was in school, being able to see multiple atoms, molecules of different sizes, shapes, structures, uh, being able to see the different types of molecular geometry and shape side by side. So that way, um, even though back in the day we would hand out pamphlets and flyers and you can look at those um, on a two-dimensional sheet, it would be really nice to be able to see multiple shapes side by side all next to each other so you can look at a molecule that's uh, tetrahedral, another one that's pyramidal, another one that's perfectly linear, and you can see them in three dimensions, move around at your whim, and see why they are the shape that they are, giving examples of different molecules that would have those geometries, those shapes, different atoms that have various electron orbitals, being able to see the difference between, say, uh, different models of the atom, whether it be uh, your general dot structure, the orbital model, where you see layers of uh, electrons surrounding the nucleus of the atom, or the quantum model for something as simple as hydrogen, see the d orbitals, p orbitals, all those different types of shapes. Instead of just drawing them on a whiteboard or on a smart board, you can actually see the clouds of electrons in 3D and why we call them the various things we do, why only certain electrons can have different locations, uh, why they don't stack on top of each other, and explain those concepts more like you would be able to hold the atom in your hands, so to speak. I know also, in regard to organic chemistry, I would have really thought it helpful to be able to see 
the different types of organic molecules side by side to help visualize what the difference is between them uh, and seeing it in full three dimensions. So being able to see like what's the difference between a ketone and an ester, an alcohol versus an acid, etc. And you can do all this, of course, as I said, with sheets of paper and a board, but I think that just being able to visualize them all side by side instead of one slide at a time on a PowerPoint or drawing them each individually, just being able to chop them up on a large screen and seeing them all simultaneously would be tremendously helpful for more advanced students. And for younger students, you might not think that there's a lot that you can teach in regard to chemistry since it is so heavily math focused. There's a lot of background information that you need to be able to do at least the fundamentals of chemistry. But that's not necessarily the case, especially for students these days. I actually remember a group of students that I was working with, um, actually a group, they couldn't have been more than 10 years old, and I was teaching them about the science of lasers. And part of that is talking about how when photons elect, um, excite electrons orbiting around the atom, how those electrons will jump up to different orbitals, fall back down, and then release different types of photons, um, or the same uh, wavelength of photon. And these kids, at the time, uh, without too much prompting, were able to uh, give me the basic structure of the atom. They knew the protons, neutrons, electrons, and they had a general idea of what they were doing in a way that you would generally see taught uh, like in your very first chemistry class as a, say, sophomore in high school, which I thought was rather impressive. And we're getting to the point, I believe, where eventually kids are going to have to start learning the very fundamentals of quantum mechanics starting elementary and middle school. No mathematics or anything highly nuanced. They're still learning to add, subtract, multiply, divide, and those things. But just the concept of what's going on fundamentally in the world that we live in. And learning those vocabulary terms, I don't think is too far beyond the realm of expectation for a lot of young kids these days. Plus, since they're not doing any of the hard math and we're just basically having fun, uh, I know of multiple, uh, say, laser programs, films, again, that can teach these concepts to younger students as well, where we don't even necessarily have to pre-program anything. We just get the proper resource from the correct company and then upload it onto our system and share it that way as well, which would be a fun change of pace again for kids. Just different setting, allowing them to leave the classroom and see things from a brand new perspective. So those are just some of my ideas on how you can use a planetarium to help teach chemistry to students of all ages. If you haven't seen the previous video on the same subject, but with regard to biology, definitely check that out. If you are an educator and you have any other ideas of your own that you'd like to share, then please do so in the comments section. And uh, with that, look forward to the next upcoming video where I'll be discussing how to use planetarium to teach my area of expertise, physics. Enjoy and have a wonderful day.